morning, or they come to our service this morning, we here at Great International Baptist Church are very happy that you are here to uh, go through God's word with us as we learn from his words today. We are so, so thankful for what God has done for us last week and also for what he is going to do for us today. We would like to start by saying Happy Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. We know that it is a time when we celebrate that we are entering this uh, holy week, that God is going to be in charge, and that we, most people, are now concentrating on, on, the, on the Lord Jesus. And so it is time for us to use this time as well to be able to give God the honor and the praise that he deserves. But before we move on, and we are going to be talking today about Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And so let's pray as we ask God's blessing over on, on our on his word today. Father, we are so thankful for what you have done for us. We are so thankful that you are a God who hears and answers prayer. We are so thankful that all things that you have done for us last week. Lord Jesus, this morning, we lift everyone that is under the sound of my voice before you. Lord, you know every pain, you know every trial, you know every sadness, you know um, every need, you know um, whatever it is, oh God, that they are praying to ask you that you will meet. Lord, some have problems financially, relational, uh, death in the family, uh, and need better housing. Uh, our, our students who are studying need your help to, to help them, oh Father, as they study, that you will bring back the things to their mind, um, that they, they diligently study. And so, Father, that they will be able to pass the exams. Thank you, Father, for, for ways that you have protected most of us. And then, Lord, we just give you thanks. Because you know, O oh Lord, we are looking forward for next week, Sunday, when we will be giving you praise for the way that we answer our prayer. Thank you, Father. And also now, Lord, we pray as we go into your word, as we see, O oh Father, as we learn from the people in those days how they celebrated Jesus. And Lord, that we would like to do the same today. Thank you for what you have done and what you are going to do. And we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hosanna in the heights. Okay, before we go into God's word, let's read the Bible. We are going to read our scripture for this morning, which is found in Matthew chapter 21. Matthew 21. And we are going to read from verse 1 through 11. Matthew 21, and we are going to read from verse 1 through 11. You have your Bible, you can open it and follow with us, or if you don't have your Bible, um, you can follow us on the screen. And it reads like this. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphay on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a coal, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coal, placed their clothes on them, and Jesus sat on them. 
a very large crowd spread their clothes on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Interesting, interesting. Uh, 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 event that took place at that day. Hosanna in the highest. One of the things that strike many people when they visit the places like Hong Kong, China, Japan, or India is that the total amount of people around, often in a relatively small space or area. Josephus, one of the Roman historians who were alive around the time of Christ, tells us that each year over one million people went to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. That's a lot. Especially when you think that the population of Jerusalem was not at large. In Jesus' time, it is estimated that it would have been even less than now. This passage is quite vivid, and we can likely envision what it must have been like to see Jesus riding in on a donkey as the street filled crowd praised him and cried out to him. As the one who could save them, Hosanna in the highest. It was a momental um, occurrence that fulfilled prophecy found in the Old Testament. And it was Jesus, Jesus' way of clearly identifying himself as the Messiah. Now, as we started to look at this portion of scripture, the first question we're going to ask ourselves is what does Hosanna mean? What does Hosanna mean? Well, the word Hosanna come, um, comes from a Hebrew word meaning save now or save us, we pray. Hosanna is a unique word only found in a few other verses in the Bible. The Gospel of Mark and John included this word as they retell the same account found in this, in this, in this account in Matthew, um, the Gospel of Matthew. The story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. In Mark chapter 11, verses 8 to 10, it reads, Many people spread their clothes on the road, while others spread branches they had caught in the field. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! You see? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. That is where you found it. In the book of John, chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. Um, the, uh, um, he said, the next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on its way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out and met him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. So in other words, they are recounting the same account and so there we found that the word is being used. Hosanna means save us. Save us, we pray. It's a prayer. It's a plea for help. It's a declaration of the need for salvation. And it is a request for freedom. And the psalmist used it 
we find that same meaning, save us, come across when it was used by the Jews as Jesus was riding into Jerusalem. They too certainly needed saving that only the long-awaited Messiah could provide. Jesus, who was sent, was sent to save humanity by death on a cross, was truly worthy of such praise. Let's look at a couple of things that we can learn from this passage. The first one, the first one, the fulfillment of the prophecy. The fulfillment of the prophecy. Matthew um, 21 verses 4 and 5 says, this took place to fulfill that was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a coal, the foal of a donkey. That is when it's taken from Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. That reads, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a pole, the fall of a donkey. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, an entry which is itself is a fulfillment of the Old Testament, is a fulfillment of, of, of the Old uh, Testament uh, uh, prophecy. The donkey entry, which tells us far more about the nature of Jesus. Yeah. On a donkey, yeah. like the judges of the yeah. Old Testament role, because he was coming as a judge to confront the religious authorities. On a donkey, as king rode when they were on a mission of peace, because he was coming. Um, in humility and peace. As he arrived slowly into Jerusalem, the crowds began, began to stir. It was going to be different. There is a sense of excitement and anticipation. Even the people who don't know him begin to ask, who is he that is getting all the attention? What's so special about him? You see, look at verse 20, um, uh, uh, verse 10 and 11. It, it says, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, you know, the whole city was stirred. Okay, and asked, who is this? The crowd answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The crowd may have anticipated that Jesus would lead a revolt against the leaders, but this was never Jesus' intention, okay, or reason that the Father had sent him. Jesus instead um, would die a humble, brutal death on a cross, paying the price for humanity, a death that he bore so that we would be free from death and forgiven of our sins. You see, so him coming then it was a fulfillment of a prophecy. Secondly, we will see from this portion of scripture that it was an announcement of his entry. An announcement of his entry. Verse 8 and 9. We read this already, but it's going to be again. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road when others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, who's Dana to the son of David? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who's Zana in the highest. He the announcement of his entry. The scripture tells us that the crowds are in the streets shouting. You see, Hosanna in the highest. The they place palm branches and ropes in front of Jesus, giving him honor. You see, so all attention was on Jesus on that day, at that moment, while he rode into Jerusalem 
on that donkey. The ground shall be on Zion and wait the front of palm, the sign of victory, telling others that this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth, who's come to Jerusalem. Suddenly, Jesus is more than just one in the million people in that crowd. He is surrounded by a large crowd in front and behind him. And he's peaceful and he's riding. It's like an earthquake hits the town. You see? Because here you see it of all these sorts of people. You see dust. Because remember, probably they didn't have petrol in those days. It was dirt road. So at all these people were there marching together with Jesus. Listen, I can imagine seeing the commotion, the, 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 the noise, everything that came with it. You see, Jesus' Galilean ministry is at the end. The journey to Jerusalem is complete. The Messiah, the servant king of Isaiah, rides into town. Hosanna, as we saw the word, in a special and beautiful way to praise God. It's especially fitting in times when we need his help or his re rescuing. Hosanna, as we saw, means, uh, reminds us that God is our Savior. God is the one who we can cry out for help and who will hear our every concern and burden. The ordinary has begun to turn into the extraordinary, you see? And as the next few days unfold, the Jews, the temple authorities, the Romans, and the crowd will all begin to realize what kind of Messiah Jesus is. They were looking for an earthly king, so they thought Jesus would be it. Remember, remember the testimony Remember how Jesus is known as the one who healed the sick, as the one who opened the eyes of the blind, as the one who fed 5,000 men and more. You see? So they wanted that. That's the person we need to make in. Later, they realized that Jesus was not coming as that type of person. You see? And then, thirdly, then, it will take us to the behavior of the religious leaders. Look at Luke chapter 19, verse 26 to 40. It said, And he went along, people spread their clothes on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. What all the miracles were, you see? And they were saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and earth in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, Rebuke your disciple. Jesus replied, I see you. The days are quiet. The stones will cry out. Listen. Here we see the behavior of the religious leaders. Listen. They wanted to keep things the way they had it. All people's eyes were on them. Everything they would have to come to them for advice, for prayer, for healing, for touching, for whatever they needed. But here comes Jesus, and every eye is on him. But this was particularly disturbing to the religious leaders who were jealous of Jesus. That's not the bottom line. You see, they demanded that Jesus silence the crowd. But he responded that even if the crowd were silent, the stones around, they will be the one crying out the same. Sometimes, you know, we feel that we are just one person in a million, in a million others. 
we may feel like we have no influence on the world around us. Or we may feel that we are not going to have any effect. We are just an ordinary person living an ordinary life. You see, but with God, there are no ordinary people. There is no ordinary life. That's not what God calls us to, call us to, or promise us. You see, he didn't call us to be quiet. He called us to, to do ordinary, everyday things, to speak ordinary words, but all the extraordinary things will happen when we are in Him. When we have compassion on those around us, and when we change the things which are not in line with God's will, and when we speak out against the social ills of our community, and when we strive to win people to the Lord through friendship evangelism, we are overcoming the things which need challenging in our lives and in our faith. Listen, we can be different. Our attitude does not have to be like these religious leaders. Our attitude doesn't have to be like those in Jesus' time. We can be different. We need to allow our life to shine for Him. As we determine to be obedient to God and His will for our lives, we are taking our part in, change, in, 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 in changing the world. See, when the crowd replies, this is Jesus, to the onlookers who in, in, inquired, who is this? They thought they were making a simple statement. In fact, they were speaking in the voice of God, as ordinary people so often do. You see, remember, people look at our life, and then they are wondering, how is that possible? But it is all because of God. His light shining through us. When we do all these good work, it is then that we are allowing others to see Jesus through us. Then we go to number, to number four. Number four is the people turn on Jesus. The people turn on Jesus. You see, look at Matthew 27, verse 20 to 23. He said, and the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas, and have Jesus executed. Listen, not only were they against their attitude was so bad, they even caused that now that they are trying to influence the crowd. Hey, let's 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 hear me. Let's just cause that he doesn't have that type of, of, of influence in the world anymore. You see. So therefore, he, it says the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? So, um, Barabbas, they answered, what should I do that Jesus or his followers? I have asked. They all answered, Crucified him. What? But they shouted all the louder. Crucified him. Wow. Wait. Are you confused as I am? Two days ago, they were just lifting up and saying, Hey, who's Allah in the highest? Who's Allah in the highest? They're changing their attitude. But again, it is important for us to notice that they were influenced by those chief priests and the elders. That's what the scripture tells us. We have to be careful. Sometimes we may have the desire to live for God, but those that are around us are no help to us. 
because they will tell us or call us and let us know that we are too fanatic. We just like to, we are too much. Why are we so involved in the things of God? You see, but listen, that is how we should be so that our life, Jesus' life can shine through us. Here in Matthew 21, the Jews are shouting, Hosanna in the highest. And just a few days later, the Jews are standing in Pilate's school shouting, crucify him. It is sobering to try to understand how things change so drastically. You see, perhaps the crowds call out Hosanna to Jesus, were different, um, were different from the crowds demanding him to be crucified. Hmm, maybe, maybe not. Or maybe the crowds felt persuaded or intimidated by the Pharisees and Sadducees, so they changed their mind. Now it is because we know the whole story. You see how it reached to even Jesus being crucified, and then how he was buried, and how he he resurrected after three days. And what is the story that was put out by the, the Pharisees and the Pharisees? Make us already know that the, these people here, they were persuaded. Therefore, the people turned on Jesus for reasons that seem unknown to us. But what we do know for certain is that this was all part of God's good and perfect plan of redemption. Jesus' crucifixion, death, and resurrection were why he came to earth. That was the way he would go on to pay the debt and save humanity. God sent his only son to be the savior of the world. And that meant he would die on the cross to make salvation available to all people. Who would accept this? Listen, Jesus' main purpose of coming was to save the world. He was humble. He surrendered entirely to the will of his Father. And in doing so, he made it possible for all humanity to receive the gift of salvation. A gift not earned on our own attempts. But a free gift means available because Jesus paid the price of all sin and death. Jesus is our Lord and Savior, truly worthy of our praise, truly worthy for us to shout Hosanna in the highest. Sadly. The salvation that the people of Jerusalem wanted that day was political, not spiritual. They were only interested in a temporary worldly fulfillment of the Messiah prophecy. See, they chose not to see the prophecies that said that said the Messiah would be a man of sorrow who would hear the grief of his people and be crushed for their sins. His opposition and death were clearly predicted in Isaiah 53. Yet, Jesus was the Messiah they had been waiting for. And he accepted their shouts of Hosanna in the highest, you see, but he was truly Emmanuel, God with us, as we see in Isaiah 7, 14. But the political conquest and final fulfillment of, of the Davidic covenant must await the second coming. You see, before Jesus could take care of the political problem of his people, he had to take care of the sin problem of his people. You see, and it is not in the manner that they had desired. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 tells us, without the shedding of the blood, 
There is no forgiveness. You see, their cries for salvation on their demand that is come now were answered with the cross. Jesus provided a spiritual salvation from the bondage of sin. Bought at great cost to the Lord Jesus. But the blessed result of that salvation extended into eternity and far outweigh any temporary benefits we could experience in this world. It's not always easy or popular or even lawful to follow Christ. But let me ask you this morning, how should you be honoring Jesus? Should I be honoring him only when no one is looking? In the privacy of my room where no one can see or hear me? Or should I honoring him? Um, should I be honoring him when everyone is watching themselves and feel that they honoring Jesus also with whatever little emphasis they put on a time like this week? Or should I be honoring him when doing so becomes difficult and I stand alone? When no one else is going or doing or saying anything to make a difference? You see, these are questions we need to ask ourselves. But the thing is, it is a personal decision. It is a personal choice. Or would you leave worshiping him to someone else? Would you have the rocks cry out instead? It may be that what we say and what we do won't be as earth-shattering as the event of Palm Sunday, but it could well be that in doing the ordinary thing, that is to let his light shine through us, like they can sometime and honor him with our awe, suddenly become one in a million of someone else saying God's words and doing his will, causing others to join in shouting, Hosanna in the highest, not for what is going to give us, not for my own personal benefit, but it is for what he has done for me, providing salvation as a free gift. But all I have to do is to accept that he is our Father in heaven. We are so thankful for Jesus, for what he has done for us. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you, Father, for your provision. Thank you, Father, for your protection. And now, Lord, as we are going to face this week, we ask that you will help us, that we will examine our attitude, that we will see also what influence are we, we are to those around us, and also to be able to evaluate that the lies that we give, that we are showing, it is the lies of Jesus, of what you have done for us, saving us, and give us the power and the strength and the courage that we will be able to go and tell others. It could be as a simple word, Lord, to invite them to serve. And so, Lord, we ask, your blessing be upon us as we continue to do our best to be what we can be for you. Thank you, Father, for it all. We love you. We praise you. We magnify you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, we're at the end of another sermon, and we would like to thank you. 
for taking the time to listen to today's program. We would like to invite you to join us again next Sunday for at the same time. And uh, if you would like to attend our, our Sunday worship service on Zoom, please uh, contact us at allbecausegrace at gmail.com and we will send you the Zoom invite. We will love the opportunity to share Christ with you and to help you grow in His Word. So therefore, contact us at allbecauseofgrace at gmail.com and let us know how we can pray for you. Here are all our contacts. So you can please contact us and we will be more than happy to help however we can. We will not bless you May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's light shine upon you as we face this week. And you do your best to do what you can to be able to give God the praise. As together, we celebrate Him for what He has done as we commemorate this week, Holy Week. Thank you again. God bless.